it hurts me knowing that I could have gotten it on sale. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> oh, nice. If you're new here, my name is Jamie and I post videos every Sunday. So I post vlogs, lifestyle and finance related videos. So if you like my content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you get notified every time I upload. And today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite frugal living tips. I feel like frugal living definitely exists on a spectrum. So you might have watched one of my what I spent in a week videos and some people might react and be like, wow, you are pretty frugal. Like you're pretty cheap. And other people might be like, you think you're frugal? Like girl, you don't know what that means. But obviously the definition of frugal is very personal and I want to acknowledge that it is privilege to think about how do I live more frugally? Because it kind of implies that you have disposable income to play with where you do have a choice on whether to save it or whether to spend it on material items or experiences. So I definitely want to put that out there. One of my top frugal living tips is waiting 30 days before I purchase something. So when I think of something that I want to buy, I'm adding it to my wish list. And that wish list is one of the many, many lists I have on my to-do app, which I talked about in my How I Stay Organized video, which I will link in the cards in case you wanted to check it out. And I know that 30 days sounds like a really long time and honestly it does feel like that sometimes but it has saved me so many times from making impulsive and emotional purchases so it really helps me to avoid my retail therapy tendencies. And one thing I will mention is that on that to-do list app, you can insert the little item in your wish list, and you can actually set a reminder to notify you when the 30 days is up. So during this 30 day waiting period, some of the questions I like to ask myself is, why do I want to bring this item into my life? And for example, if it's because it's on trend, then I know that's one of the reasons that's just not okay. Buying on trend items is just not a habit that I want to continue because I found that in previous experiences, it's usually a very temporary phase where I like it when it's on trend and how much I like the item kind of dwindles the longer it's off trend. And I find that those trendy items are what ends up in my donation pile. And it was just, it was not a sustainable habit that I wanted to continue. And another question that I like to ask is whether this is really necessary. So for example, I could easily buy a new dress to attend my friend's wedding. But when I ask myself, is this really necessary? I'll try to be a bit more creative and think about what items I already do have. I'm sure that if I tried hard enough, I could definitely pull an outfit together for my friend's wedding and I don't need to buy another dress. Another frugal living tip is to purchase things when they're discounted. So something that I really, really don't like doing is buying things full price. It's just, ugh, it hurts me knowing that I could have gotten it on sale. So as much as I can, I love getting the best deal. I love getting something for good value. And something that really helps me with this is the Karma extension. And I think it was called Shop Tiger before. And it's basically just this little Chrome extension. And it's got a few different functions now, but the function that I mainly gravitate to is the ability to create lists of things that you have your eye on and it will alert you by sending you an email when things are on sale. It also notifies you when an item that you like is back in stock, but that is a separate issue. And I feel like flowing on from that naturally, one of the frugal living tips that I've really had to focus on is not buying things just because they're on sale and because it's a good deal. It's a sure way to just fill up your life with more clutter. So even if I see a good deal, I'm not bypassing that 30 day wish list route. Sometimes it really just doesn't make sense to spend more to save. Like, you know, those deals that say if you buy three items, then you get 20% off 
but you only needed one item, you know, don't get sucked into that. So another frugal living tip is to consider how you can maximize the benefits when you do spend money. So not only just looking for discounts or waiting before you purchase, but looking at how you can reap other benefits when you spend money that you are going to spend anyway. So of course, not thinking about those potential rewards or points as a reason to spend. They're just, they're just that cherry on top at the end when you click check out so for example I have this cash rewards extension and there are a bunch of brands that have partnered up with cash rewards and different brands at different times will have a different percentage of cash back I've saved a lot of money through this way so for example when I'm shopping for essentials or those bigger ticket items like electronics I have saved a lot there are also plugins like Honey where you accumulate points with your purchases and it can result in a cash discount for one of your purchases. There are so many rewards programs out there that I think it's worth it to look into them and it can be as simple as the Woolies rewards program when you scan your little card whenever you go grocery shopping and you can get a discount every now and then. Another frugal living tip is to really, really examine how you want to spend your money and what's important to you. So for example, I identified my long-term spending goals to be so much more important to me than my short-term goals. For example, I throw a lot of money at a holiday fund and right now it's just interstate travel and road trips, but I definitely prefer spending money on those experiences rather than material items. So another long-term goal that was important to me and that I was throwing money at was my wedding fund. If you've been here with me for a while, firstly, thank you. And I know you must have heard me talk about my wedding fund a couple times before. And just a little update that your girl has fully saved up her wedding fund. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so who knows when my wedding's gonna be because of COVID, but the wedding fund is ready. Hey, hey, I'm getting too excited. <laughs> so my point is that I focus on goals that I really, really care about. And again, this is just really tied to the mindset where I want to spend money on experiences and just consume less material goods in general. So following on from the previous tip, once I put money into those saving goals, I am not dipping into those funds. I know sometimes it feels like you really need that dress or you've been eyeing those high-waisted flared white jeans for a while and you know it's gonna look good on you but repeat after me a fashion emergency is not a real emergency <laughs> if you're at the stage you don't have enough money in your discretionary account and you don't have enough money in your splurge account you need, a, you need to be patient, those things will eventually come into your life. But that time is not now. So try to think of it as a one-way street. Think of your saving accounts as a vault. You lock that shit up and you do not touch it unless it's for the intended purpose. One of my favorite frugal living tips is to audit your spending. I've said it before and I will continue saying it because I think it's so important. You need to know how you're spending your money, what you're spending your money on to know how to save a little bit more. It's like trying to fix a leaky tap when you don't even know which sink is the issue. It doesn't make sense. If you haven't done one already, Seriously, block out a fortnight, spend the way you usually would. Don't try to be good just because you know you're gonna be counting it at the very end, it's not gonna be beneficial. But spend the way you normally would and tally up everything, split it into different categories, see how much you're spending on food, see how much you're spending on drinks and entertainment. And I want you to go through it with like a fine tooth comb. If you need to go through it with a friend or your partner to kind of keep you accountable and question you on things, that might be really helpful. 
but I want you to go through your spending and critically analyze every single item. For example, do you need a haircut every fortnight? Can you find a cheaper barber? If you're seeing yourself pay for three streaming services, do you really need all of that? Is it possible for you to join a family plan with other friends where you could be saving individually? Can you meal prep a bit more and freeze more of your meals so you're not tempted by Uber Eats so much? So those are examples of questions that you could be asking yourself when you've done your little audit. Another frugal living tip is to resist those food delivery services as much as you can. So personally, I found this tip to be really useful. So I only get Uber Eats when it's like an SOS emergency. When I've had like the worst day at work that I've had in the past six months, it's pouring outside, I feel really sad, and all I want is Uber Eats. That is the point at which I will get Uber Eats. It is a high threshold to meet and I know it's really personal and I know some people will feel really strongly about this but I just don't think the food quality is the same. The portions are usually smaller, it's more expensive and there's a delivery fee. It just just doesn't sit right with me to have this as you know like a regular habit and I know this can be a pressure point for some people because I know it can spiral really easily into a habit where it's just kind of assumed that you might get Uber Eats at least once or twice a week, but it really, really adds up and it's not healthy anyway. So my personal tip is to cut back on those types of services. So those were my frugal living tips. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below on your favorite way to save money. As always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I will see you next Sunday. Bye.